Let's do an experiment. Suppose we take a little sample container and we fill it up with two liquids. So we're going to put hexane up here and water down here. And then we're going to add some surfactant. And let's keep it really simple. I've got an alkyl chain and some sort of polar group at the end. Let's just add a little bit of soap. We inject 10 millimoles of this soap molecule into the system. So after everything's come to equilibrium, we sample the hexane layer. Okay, so we sample the hexane layer. We analyze that sample for the concentration of soap. And then we use the volume of hexane to figure out the total amount of soap in the hexane. Now, just to be clear, we sample this hexane, maybe we pull out a tiny little sample, maybe this is a liter, and we pull out one mil, we analyze that mil, see what the concentration of soap is in that mil, multiply by this volume, and that's how we get how many millimoles of soap are in the hexane. We then repeat the experiment in the water. So we sample some of the water, we uh, see what the concentration of soap in the water is. And we multiply by the volume of water to see how many millimoles of soap are in the water. And we find that there are y millimoles. So y is just some number, x is some number. OK, so we know we put 10 millimoles in. So we know there's a certain millimoles here, a certain millimoles here. And what do you suppose x and y add to? If you said 10, you're wrong. x plus y does not equal 10. And this seems odd to us since we put 10 in. And in fact, what we find is x plus y is less than 10. So in other words, there seems to be some of the soap is missing. Where did it go? Well, as you might guess, since we're talking about surface excess, it went to the surface. So we could draw a simple molecular picture of this, that while some of the molecule, we're going to do this as a cartoon where the polar head group is a circle and then the nonpolar chain is just a line. Some of it's dissolved in water, some of it dissolves in hexane, but quite a bit of it will go to the surface. Right? We know that polar things like dissolve in water, and this is certainly polar, it's charged, and the tails are not going to want to dissolve in water, so they dissolve in the hexane. So there's going to be a tendency to accumulate at the surface, which means the concentration up here and the concentration down here, they are not reflective of what's going on here. There's an excess of stuff up here, hence the name surface excess. So we can see the moles of soap. We'll just use S for soap total has to equal the moles of the soap in the water plus the moles of soap in the hexane plus the moles of soap in the surface. We're always going to use this, the letter sigma for surface. Now the cool thing is that these are easy to measure. We know how much soap we put in. We can do a chemical analysis of the bulk of the water and the bulk of the hexane, as we mentioned earlier. And so by subtraction, we can actually figure out how many molecules are excess at the surface. So uh, we can express this in terms of a concentration. We're going to define the surface excess We are going to define the surface excess as the, the moles of excess stuff at the surface. So if we're doing the soap molecule, it would be called sub S for the soap molecule. 
divided by the area. So it's how many excess moles there are per area. This will give us units of moles per meter squared. All right, so surface excess can be negative. How is that possible? Let's imagine we took some sodium chloride and dissolved it in water. So we've got sodium ions floating around and chloride ions floating around. Great. And we did the we did the analysis of the solution here, and we know that we can say that the amount of sodium chloride at the surface plus the amount of sodium chloride in the water plus the amount of sodium chloride in the air, those equal n total. And it's really not volatile, so we'll say that's zero. It doesn't dissolve, it doesn't uh, evaporate. And so we end up saying that N sodium chloride at the surface, the surface excess, is N total minus the amount that we find in the water. And this is just concentration times volume. So we can sample some of this solution down here, get its concentration, and multiply times the volume, and we end up getting this. So we can, we can uh, put in a certain amount, and then we can do our chemical analysis and get what's actually dissolved down there. And what we get is that this number is bigger than this number. And why is that? I mean, we didn't create sodium chloride out of thin air, so how can this number be bigger than this? Well, let's draw a molecular picture to explain it. We know that there's a hydration sphere around every sodium ion and every chloride ion. And we can do that where there's water. We can't do that up here, but what we're not realizing is that we really can't do it effectively right at the surface either. So what that means is that we see plenty of chloride ions and sodium ions down here, but as we get within one or two molecular diameters of the surface, we don't expect to see sodium chloride. So it should actually be a zone up here that is uh, having a lower concentration. So when we use the volume, we said, okay, I'm gonna take this concentration and multiply by the volume of the entire container, we got an answer that was bigger than the actual number of ions that are there. Because actually, the ions are occupying slightly smaller volume, we'll call it V prime, which does not include the surface region. If we had multiplied our, uh, let's say we did a chemical analysis and said this was you know, 0.1 molar, and we multiplied by V prime, we would have gotten the correct number of ions. But we didn't. We multiplied by the actual con the volume of, of liquid of the solution, the whole volume of the solution, including this region, and that gave us a number that's too high. So when we subtract that too high number from our original number, we get a negative number. So in this case, uh, we would end up with a negative number for N sigma, and that of course means that our surface excess for sodium chloride would actually be negative.